Would you state your name and uh, where you live, please, for the record? Sure. My name is Jenny Lenny, and I live at 17300 Sir Francis Drake Boulevard in Inverness, California. Lenny, L-U-N-N-Y. Not you pronounced Looney. <laughs> Uh, so my husband and I have been uh, in trucking, my husband far longer than I. His father started our trucking company in 1946 when he first got out of World War II. Um, in 1972, my husband began driving uh, as soon as he finished high school and uh, we are still trucking today. Uh, we actually were able to grow our business to five or six trucks working uh, in a plant and then the uh, sort of crash in building happened and all of our trucks uh, we decided to sell and uh, we purchased one new truck and started all over um, working uh, in landscape materials uh, all over the state of California. Is that what you have now, one truck? We do, we have one truck. And. Um uh, you said that you had plans of expanding and you had five trucks? We did uh, at one time for many years. With, uh, and tell me, uh, with, uh, do you have plans to, to get more trucks? Uh, probably not. Um, and, and why not? Well, uh, we are both in our 60s and uh, to, to start all over with that kind of debt will be impossible for us. Have, have you looked into it to see how much it would cost in order to to really develop your business the way you'd like to and be compliant with CARB? Um, my husband has done much more of that penciled work than I have. Uh, part of what happened to our family is the loss of my job as well. And I want to go into that because uh, even though uh, it uh, CARB was not involved in it. Um, it demonstrates the United States government efforts of the day. What was your job? My job was, uh, I was the manager of Drake State. Just, just take your time, you'll be all right. Well, I was the manager of Drake's Bay Oyster Company. And, uh, and, and tell me about that business. How, uh, of course, you were known even uh, to my friends in the Chesapeake Bay that, that I'm representing now because the EPA is trying to put them out of business. Um, we had the support of oyster farms all over the United States uh, supporting us in our fight to, uh, to save the oyster farm. When I listened to all of the comments today, um, part of my emotion is this is deja vu of the seven years that we just spent fighting the federal government and falsified science. And I see that this is just another entity. We dealt with the Department of the Interior, the National Park Service, the California Coastal Commission. Um, and it, it really didn't matter how truthful or honest or upfront we were, there was an agenda and it was a political agenda, and uh, hence California, California's largest oyster farm for the past 94 years is gone. Uh, and it was in business for 94 years, is it was, that right? It was, it was not in business uh, with our family. We actually grew up out in the Point Reyes area on my parents' ranch. Um, it was owned by Johnson's Oyster Farm. Anybody that is familiar with that area would know that name. Um, our family, my brothers, uh, took it over uh, about 11 or 12 years ago. And, and, and uh, what was your production like? Um, our production was huge. Uh, we, we produced about 50% of California's oysters um, at its max. We had to really try to be good business people as this fight progressed. Um, for some of you that d might not know, we took this case all the way to the Supreme Court. We went through the Ninth Circuit Courts. There was one very positive 
um, member of the Ninth Circuit Court, and we felt if we didn't, if we asked for an en banc hearing, that maybe there would be more people, more people on that board that would agree. Um, and then eventually it went to the Supreme Court. And when we lost in court, we were given some final dates, July 31st to close down California's last cannery of oysters. There are no oysters jarred in the state of California. You can get some from Asia, or you can get some from Washington, which are wonderful. I'm not discriminating. I'm just thinking about our carbon footprint and all this important greenness that is not so real. Um, when the cannery was closed down, all of the, the uh, women that worked in the cannery, many of whom had 20 to 30 years with that business, they lost their jobs on that day. The buildings had to be removed on that day. Uh, all of our storage had to be taken away. We had until July, uh, until December 31st to empty the bay of every oyster that was out there. Uh, and uh, promptly after uh, December 31st, um, excavators were in the, brought in by the National Park Service in the place this level. There is no history of that farm in California any longer. Now, that, uh, the area that you're in, originally um, the, the, the plans for that area were that uh, that was designed to provide uh, recreation for Sacramento and uh, I'm not sure whether San Francisco was involved in that. What, was that right? It is. It's Point Reyes National Seashore. It is not a park. Point Reyes National Seashore, and it was intended. It was at Point Reyes National Seashore. It was intended to be a recreation area for uh, the Greater Bay Area, and that we saw. We saw tens of thousands, if not, uh, I, I would say roughly 50 to 60 thousand people just stopped in at the oyster farm. Uh, annually. When did uh, when did the effort to put you out of business begin? It began about two years after my brothers did an immense cleanup. Uh, they were they were told by the park su superintendent um, that it was a good idea for them to come in and take over, and they did this huge cleanup. It was a and from there, um, two years into that program is when they said, we probably will not be releasing the property to you. And that's when, and, and quite frankly, I'll be honest with all of you, I managed the oyster farm because this became such a political battle. All of us here fighting, for, for, fighting against CARB knows the time and the energy it takes. And what we tried to do is save food production, local food production in California. Um, and so my brother Kevin is, has been and always, you know, was always the spokesperson for Drake Bay Oyster Company. And, and what was the specific reason why you were told that you had to close? It was all, I think that's the crazy part. If anybody ever took time to read, every time they, they came up with some scientific evidence and it was disproven, then they would come up with a new one. So we had, a marine, we, we had an issue with seal pups, and the Marine Mammal Commission came out and found absolutely no problem. Uh, it was just one thing after another after another. Uh, they, there, was claims, there were claims that our boat loaders were uh, harming the eelgrass. It's one of the most lush areas of eelgrass in all of California, um, in California's waters. It is a beautiful place, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a wonderful place to be void, but it's also a great place that we, uh, where, where we could have coexisted. Uh, did they ever raise the issue that the oysters and the uh, raising of the oysters was causing environmental damage? They did. <laughs> and, uh, Which is and the reason I ask is that that's one of the reasons the EPA is trying to close down the oystering in uh, the Chesapeake Bay, when in fact, you know, don't you, that oysters are the greatest filters of water that there are. They certainly are. And where oysters are, the water is clearer and cleaner than anywhere else. It, it is beautiful. Uh, was the EPA involved in your case at all, that, that you knew about? I'm no. sure they were, but. I'm sure they were, but not that I'm aware of. Okay. 
there were many organizations um, who are comprised of some of the same people. Um, and I, I can't remember their names exactly, but certain water um, entities that come and check for creeks and things like that. There was always someone. I can't think of their names. And, and, uh, and were they doing clean water checks under the Clean Water Act? Yes. yes. So EPA, as the yeah, yeah, so enforcer that of that act, was involved. Mm -hmm. um, Again, a lot of the politics, I had no time for it, and my brother was clearly the spokesperson and worked hand in hand with the attorneys. What county is that in? Oh, that is in Marin County. Did you have, uh, did you have cooperation from the, the county government? Mm, uh, that's a good question, but I, I can't say yes or no about. I do know that that's where it all began. The false science began right in front of the supervisors of Marin County. And they probably weren't aware that under the coordination authority, they they had the upper hand with those agencies. No, I don't know that anybody has, until California, until this operation, I had never even heard of it. Have you been, uh, uh, I don't want to go into details, uh, but have you filed an action for a takings or have they offered you money for the farm? No, there there is no money for the farm. We just had to do the cleanup. The cleanup was about a two month process. We sold as many oysters as we could possibly sell, but there were more oysters in the water than anyone could humanly sell in the middle of winter. So the remaining oysters were trucked out by end dumps and transfers to the landfill. This is our government. Well, the uh, I'm going to tell you a, a, a little story. I, I shouldn't in the interest of time, but I'm going to. A developer down by Las Vegas, uh, in order to develop a subdivision, was required to make mitigation of about $5 million to the Bureau of Land Management to protect the Sonoran Desert tortoise. And so the BLM built a preserve, and they gathered all the tortoises that they could, and they kept them in the preserve until the money ran out. And then they decided to euthanize uh, the endangered tortoises uh, until some little town used the coordination effort and got them to release them back into the desert uh, to live where they had been before. But that's, uh, that's, that's just another story. Um, this, uh, have, you, have you considered filing a takings action against them? You know, I don't know. I'd have to ask. Um well, I just encourage you to do that. It's a regulatory taking, pure and simple. Um, there's 50 years of precedent in the Supreme Court for it, and you really ought to do it. Um, and I say that uh, recognizing that I was part of the Wayne Hage takings case where for seven years I worked with the San Francisco attorneys. They were involved for 17 years. The judge awarded $27 million, and the Court of Appeals reversed it in five pages. But uh, that one was uh, an experimental case. Yours isn't. Uh, it's pretty clear. At any rate, uh, getting back to CARB, uh, having lost that, having lost that investment, I'll say, and, and your job, uh, you and your husband have decided you just can't expand your business and grow it uh, anymore because of the expense that it would be to comply with car that is correct uh, did, did you hear the, uh, the the gentleman talking this morning about the smoke testing I did if that were the alternative if the alternative were just that the truck pass that kind of test, would you and do, do and, I, and I don't know the speculative, but would you and your husband be considering expanding your business? Uh, it is possible. There's enough okay. work uh, he has. He keeps extremely busy, busier today than when we were young. Um, and we've been doing this for, well, he's been driving for 46 years, so it's a long time. But he's busiest today than he 
been in many years. Uh, did he uh, did he start this when he came out of the service? No, my my father-in-law. So Your father-in-law. The business came started out of in 1946, and then we took it over in 1979. Uh, in a hearing before the BLM, 20 22 years ago, um, a rancher that I represented said to the Secretary of Interior in the hearing. Uh, when he landed, when he was one of the first troops that walked ashore at Normandy, he never really believed he'd have to be fighting his own government to protect his ranch from him. And, uh, and three men after him, a rancher said that as he walked in the death march in Bataan, the one thing that kept he and his, uh, and his fellow civilian workers alive was the thought that uh, freedom was worth it. And he never thought he'd be fighting uh, to save his ranch. And they have saved them, but barely. And they're still under attack today to, to have their ranches closed down. Are there any questions for the witness, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Ms. Lenny. Um, glad to finally get to meet you in person. I was one of your supporters from Colfax. Oh, thank you. Uh, the, uh, and I, I did write letters to, uh, this is regarding Drake's Boy Oyster Company. Mm -hmm. I did write letters, but I never received responses from the following people, from Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and Congressman Huffman. Did they, at any point, I believe at one point, um, Ms. Feinstein was supporting you, but the one thing you always hear Senator Boxer talk about is jobs, 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 yet she yanks 30 out of Marin County by her actions. Did any of the three of them come to you uh, with any statement at all? Um. Um, Ms. Feinstein was very supportive of our our, um, our our fight the entire time until it hit the courts. Um, Mr. Huffman uh, enjoyed an oyster bar prior to his being elected, and then he actually uh, turned against us, as did uh, all of the politicians. Sorry to hear that. I'm glad that's on public record. Thank you. Jenny, my heart goes out to you, and I want you to know that the people in Shasta County, many, many, many of them wrote letters to support you. We have followed it all the way through, and we wish to God it had turned out different. We but have family in Shasta County, and, uh, and actually ranchers that were in Point Reyes that have moved up into that area, and they would come down regularly to visit. We know you were up there. Yeah, we were. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My heart goes out to you also. I, I followed the story in the news and, and it come up in many different political conversations. I, I have a question for you. What, what role did NGOs play in this whole thing? Because I've, I've noticed in a lot of different circles that the, the non-governmental organizations are getting a huge, they seem to pay t more attention to them than us. So, for example, are you thinking of maybe some of our local? Uh, Baykeeper, Riverwatch. Right, Environmental Impact, uh, uh, or Environmental Action Committee uh, was a small, com and they were forceful. I mean, it, they were hugely non-supportive of us. California Coastal Commission, um, they were very difficult. They still are. Uh, I'd have to ask my brother, who were some of the supportive, of course, Farm Bureau. Many of the agricultural uh, entities were strongly behind us. But our environmental group seemed uh, not to be there. What, what was your beef? What, what, what seemed to be the Wilderness. outside of the fact that you existed and you were making money? They wanted to, yes, they want people gone and wilderness. This was all about wilderness. Drake's Estero, although it's been inhabited by man, whether it be the Miwok Indians or all of the ranchers out there for the past 150 years, um, was turned into a wilderness, a wilderness that still has a parking lot. Thank you. 
follow up to that. Was the Environmental Defense Fund involved against you? Do you remember? I don't remember. I don't remember. I, I have one quick question, and, and maybe Councillor can help to clarify as well. Um, as he was discussing, the, the taking of the farm was basically represents a regulatory taking. Um, is that not similar that if you can no longer use or, or keep equipment due to government regulations, does that not also represent a regulatory taking of your property in regards to the trucks? That's a in, good question. In our opinion, yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. <laughs> Peters and I, <laughs> mm -hmm. we think so definitely. Mm -hmm. um, keep your eyes and ears posted because the next group that will probably be doing the same thing that the oyster farm did are all of the ranchers out there. There are 13 ranchers out there. My mom and dad were the very first certified organic grass-fed beef operation. They were limited to the number of cattle that could be on their ranch. And they had to, with the droughts, of course, make things even more difficult, but they sold out due to the fact that they just couldn't make ends meet. And that's all dictated by the National Park Service, the Department of the Interior. They make those rules that we must live within. I'm sorry that you had to go through this. Uh, in your earlier comments, and, and I may be incorrect, but in your earlier comments, did they force you to take out all the infrastructure, all your, where your buildings had to be taken down? In other words, there's no footprint left there from that you were there. No, they are still working on some of the oyster racks. We had a very different type of oyster growing program out there, uh, similar to what was done in Japan in the 50s. Those were, there, was, there were negotiations that went on. I had nothing to do with that. That was my brother and lawyers and of the uh, Department of the Interior lawyers, and so the structures that are in the waters are being taken out by the National Park Service, um, and we just had to take all of our belongings, um, and then the shell of the buildings were left and demolished uh, before the 15th of January. It's a shame. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just another point of where the government is that completely out of control but thank you very much well, you're very welcome and I think that is my final comment is more people need to know what's going on with carb somehow we have to get this out there because if we don't fight I know what the end result will be and it won't be owner operators and that's how many of us have been able to own our own home send our children to college and we can only hope for that for our grandchildren. So somehow, we together as a group have to get this out to people. When we talk to people, they don't understand what CARB is doing. They just don't understand what CARB is. And, you know, I think we can do it. I think the county by county, we can get this message out. And thank you for taking the time to hear me. Thank you, Jenny.